is a go. It's a go for, uh, this is no time for rational thinking. It's, uh, volume 15, episode 1 and 2 of The Optimist. And today, we are outside the cage with some choice conversations with Chris Stefani. That's Christopher Stefani. And uh, you can find him on uh, his website there. And I'll be bringing you all some links, but it is choiceconversations.com. Libsyn, L-I-B-S-I, I'm sorry, S-Y-N dot com. Uh, so today's topics that we'll be uh, talking about is uh, that'll include improving life relationships through communication. Um, what motivates people? Uh, a healthy mind and body by nutrition and exercise. I've uh, just implemented myself into a program of my own for that. Also, the spiritual experience, live in gratitude and right, and I and I can. Uh, parentheses uh, positive, so right positive thinkings and more, including uh, effective parenting, raising uh, psychologically healthy children with a peaceful approach, using the uh, nonviolent communication and the trivia method. So with that, welcome Chris, and I'm uh, glad you could join us uh, through our little bumps here getting started. Um, glad you could be here. That's my pleasure, Vince. Thanks for having me on. Great. So we, you and I have uh, we've talked before, and uh, um, I, I'm proud to present you before our listening audience over here at uh, RealLibertyMedia.com and those in chat. Um, Chris is uh, he he has the right way of thinking. Uh, he has a an approach that uh, that it is with all seriousness uh, how we should probably all be con- not not only looking at the world and, and too many times we when we do that we're not. Uh, we're not looking back at ourselves, so that's the most important part of uh, being a part of what matters worldwide is uh, making that change within yourself. Um, with that, with the communication, you know, I, I noticed uh, a couple of people that uh, would prefer that I say their name as it is uh, given. Uh, and Christopher, I, I asked just for a moment before you came on air. I said, you know, I have, I make the assumption to call you Chris and. You know, is that okay? It's like for me, Vincent, uh, Vince, and that's how, as y'all know here, that uh, I, I have, I'm a man of many names, that is, so. <laughs> Chris, how do you, how do you feel about, I mean, does, does it, uh, do we become too familiar in a sense of, uh, of uh, by me calling you Chris? You know? uh, nobody calls me Christopher, so just call me Chris, that <laughs> works just fine. Perfect, man. <laughs> well. So what would you say is so important in that when uh, we identify with one another in, in our communication? Well, that's a great question, Vince. Like you had mentioned when you were uh, so uh, graciously introducing me there, I think probably the first thing is, is just being aware. So I'm getting an echo right now coming out of... Uh, Vince dot flash. Do you yeah. Uh, what happened there, Flash? The, a, the wife is fixing right things. Okay. She knows what she's okay. doing. Just bear with her. It'll it'll work itself out in a minute. <laughs> All right. I'll just keep talking. So, yeah. I'm sorry about thanks. the interruption, guys. Continue. As no you were. No worries. So, I would say the most important thing when you're trying to communicate with someone else is just having self awareness of you know, what's going on inside of me right now. And that's going to help you in many, you know, many aspects of your life, whether uh, you're talking about communicating with someone else, whether you're, you're, um, you know, at your job or whatever it is, being successful in all the different areas of your life, having self-awareness is an important part of that, so that uh, self-reflection and, you know, knowing what's driving you in that moment you know, what are you trying to get out of this communication that you're having with some this person? That's a that's a good place to start. I mean, because most of us, you know, I, I would say, you know, the vast majority of, of people that I know and that I've met, they're just kind of on autopilot, and there's not much looking on, looking at what's going on inside. There's not much of a an internal view, and that you know that that's um leads to inefficiencies, it leads to misunderstandings, it, uh, it, it makes life a lot more difficult than it needs to be, is what I would say. So what do you think the motivating factor 
is in general hard for uh, most people as, as we all you know, are trying to make our way through, through this world in life. Um, and, and do you think that uh, a lot of times that uh, what people perceive to be their perceived is uh, perhaps uh, uh, manipulated at some point with uh, propaganda and the social engineering and so forth? Well, I think if you get down to the root motivating factors, those are shared among people. You know, we, we all have the same basic needs, the same drives, you know, be those biological and, you know, we need food, water, shelter, etc., or even the psychological ones of, of a connection with another person, community, love, these sorts of things. They, um, we all have these same needs, and these needs, if you dig deep enough, we all have the same needs, and that it's actually a really great thing because it, it means we can relate to each other. Even if we completely disagree on the methods used to meet those needs, you know, whatever strategies people are using to, to try to fill those needs, we might disagree on the strategies completely, but we can understand the other person's need. You know, so an example of that might be, say, you're talking to somebody and they're for sending troops into Afghanistan, and you're not for that. And you talk to them and you, you say, well, you know, you want to send troops into Afghanistan. Is that because you have a need for security? You really value security. You know, you, you want safety for yourself and your family. And they say, well, yes, that's, that's, of course that's it. And then say, you know, guess what? I value security as well. I, I, I value security for my family and, and, and my own person and, and um, you know, those I love. So we, we've got an area that we can connect on. Now, now um, that we, you know, we realize that we, we both want the same things. We're both coming from the same area, from the same stance. Now, maybe we, with that in mind, let's let's talk about what our strategies could be to have security. Because there's a lot of different strategies to, to have security and safety. You know, one of them, a potential one, might be you know using the military for certain things. But there's a lot of strategies for that. Let's let's just sit down and talk about because we both value that. But I, I I maybe disagree with you on your strategy there. So that's one of the things that is exciting to me when you start getting into self-reflection and examining communication from a, a uh, more of a, like a, um, what's the word I'm looking for here? I'm thinking academic, that's probably not the right term for it, but, but just kind of studying communication <laughs> rather than just performing it without thinking about it. And, you know, uh, go ahead. I, I think that that's a real good reflection there because, um, when we choose to have an interaction in, in conversation with someone, uh, uh, we, I think uh, a lot of times if we're, we're trying to use a, a technique such as uh, whatever, nonviolent communication, any number of methods, even to the propaganda, the use of, uh, of, you know, techniques that would, uh, you know, cause people to pay attention and remember. There's a lot of techniques in, involved in, in uh, presenting a message. And, but for a real true conversation, um, we, we have to really truly emphasize with that person. And um, so, so being heard, you know, as well as hearing, in a sense, um, and moving forward, because everybody wants to know what can we do. Well, uh, I think beyond the change with ourselves, there's, there's no uh, no better place to start, right? Yeah, I agree that that's a great way of putting it, Vince. Being heard and hearing others. People get really caught up in trying to deliver their message to the other person. You know, I I don't want the troops in Afghanistan, and I don't care whether you want it or not. I'm going to force that message on you, and I'm going to sledgehammer you with my message of bring the troops home, and they're, they're doing the same thing back to you. And meanwhile, nobody's listening to each other and saying, you know what? We actually have an area we can connect on. We actually are both coming from the same place of, of security. So let's talk about that and see if we can maybe find an area where where uh, you know we, we agree on things. And from that, come up with a strategy that is 
acceptable to both parties. You know, be that um, you know, be what what whether the, to send the troops into Afghanistan or you know what movie you're going to watch with your wife tonight. You know, there's yeah. so uh, uh, the point is that when, when you take what is perceived as the uh, the objective and the only way of hearing something, let's say the troops, uh, it moves. It, that's taking it to the end. So if you start right there and say, okay, then let's look at that, and then you backtrack uh, and, and you work your way back in, backwards on the trivia and, and then start. So then you can then move forward. Because it's not the fact that, uh, you know, troops in Afghanistan is the answer. Well, what's the question and why are they there? And when you see that there are things that affect that, then those, those problems can be dealt with with an other than approach. So... Um, with, with our communication, we'll find, like, I, I was talking to Lonnie Clark this morning and, and on the deal and, and with the, the Bundys in, in Oregon, and, you know, they're now arresting folks out uh, from the 2014 uh, protest in Dunkerville. Um, and and her, her, her thing is, 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 well, we need a BLM. Well, what is the BLM and what are they actually doing? And uh, are these protesters, because they're doing it other than the way you're doing it, do, you, do we can we not see that there is also a commonality which uh, that the powers that are in these seats of the state are, are affecting against us? So when we can when we can see where we're all in the same pot of stew there uh, with the frogs and the crickets um, all in the way, then, then we can make plans to uh, get out of it, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think that's the only way that you well maybe saying if the only way is taking it too far, but the most effective way, at least that I've found at communicating with someone else, at convincing someone else of something, getting them to see your point of view is to try to understand their point of view, is to, to, to see where they're coming from, you know, and, you know, if you're wanting them to see where you're coming from, that, that's, of course, that's the least you can do is try to see where they're coming from, you know, set the example of, you know, the behavior that you're looking for. Yeah, you have uh, you have a lot of choice conversations at your website. I'm going to go grab that link and open it up, and uh, I'm going to bring it over to the chat here at worldofremedia.com. And uh, thanks, Grimmer, for that. And uh, over at World Truth, uh, providing the service for World Truth out of Earth. Sorry, worldtruth.org. Uh, thank you, Grim. Larry, she's listening. Grim is listening right now. Bunch of chatters over here. Uh, you'll you see it now, but you'll hear me saying it in just a minute. And, uh, hey, go check out Choice Conversations. There's, uh, I will go back there, let me see, here it is. A whole, whole list of uh, um, conversations that this has had with a, a bunch of uh, people. Uh, Solvenir, Walter Solvenir, uh, Walter Hendricks at his Solvenir event, Saturdays, UCY.tv, and uh, you listen to it over here at realtorymedia.com. He's a friend of ours. And you and he, uh, and I had the uh, a conversation, and uh, we uh, went a lot of different directions, and you came back a little later on and had just a little bit more uh, conversation. I've got it in box over here. <clears throat> so, thank you, Cowboy. Um, okay, I'm distracted. Let me go back. There it is. Okay. Yeah, so visit, visit over there and listen to a lot of good stuff. So, I went down and I kind of compiled them with a short list. Uh, there's like open the uh, podcast, uh, some topics uh, that you've had with some other folks. And, and uh, I'm going to skip forward a little bit out of uh, order on my list and, and go, go up here to uh, the Raising uh, Psychologically Healthy Children. Uh, you had that conversation with Pete uh, Gerlach. Uh, sure. Be big for kids. So when, when, when you consider what we are uh, as people uh, today, but we, we came from children, right? And now, sorry, Hal, I'm using these words the common vernacular here. But, uh, so if we're going to really make a change, after we've changed ourselves in our uh, sons and daughters, uh, we would want to reflect a, uh, you know, we don't, we don't want to beat it into them or make them or force them or trick them, but the, by choice and giving them the information to make a, a good choice, then then we raise, uh, we raise the next generation into better thinkers, better communicators, 
uh, and better equipped to deal with what is at hand. Uh, I myself don't think that we can uh, tip the world all at once right now. I mean, we might come to a point where we've got enough, enough leverage there to tip it, but uh, we sure need a lot more people that are that are thinking more more right and doing things with uh, better thinking that leads to, uh, if not at least the right that decision, but a, a more right decision at least. Uh, and that starts, like I say, with, with our sons and daughters. Uh, there's a lot of uh, unschooling. Uh, Dana Martin, she's just down in Acapulco. Uh, uh, Mark and Rose, down there, a lot, a lot of other great speakers. He's so uh, great thinkers. And, um, I have a I have a pretty good list of people that I use out there for um, uh, kind of uh, balancing out all all these this information. And as Jules was talking about this morning on UC Right TV before the first cut, uh, such an overwhelming amount of information, and sometimes it becomes overwhelming. Uh, she was talking about a point of ignoring. Uh, so and, and I thought, well, it's just because I'm ignoring you. It just means that I'm just not paying you any attention right now. And so it's a fair phrase on itself. <laughs> Sometimes we have to look about and make sure what it is that we got is all balanced out. And by doing so, I, I use a lot of people like uh, like you, Chris, uh, Daryl Becker. You know, there's a, a, I have a pretty long list in fact, you can read it off. Uh, and you, as well, have a, a, a lot of people that you, I think, in the same sense, uh, used to that to that same purpose as well. And so uh, with this very long list you have over here of conversations that you've had at Choice Conversations, um, this one here particularly, there's a, a lot of attention to be given to uh, properly uh, providing for our offspring. And how would you, uh, I, I'd like you to kind of give us a, a rundown on start to finish through that process. Sure, sure. Well, the relationship that you have with your children is, you know, it's, it has the potential to be the most rewarding relationship that you have in your life. So, you know, that that's the, I guess where it starts is you have this. Uh, I mean, there's just such a an opportunity there to enrich your own life, and while at the same time enriching someone else's life, you know, there, there's no person that you can have a bigger impact on than your own children, and to be able to, to give them the best life, the, the, best, the most nurturing environment you possibly can is, um, you know, it's, it's, it's just a, a wonderful gift, and it's one of those things that, you know, if you're concerned about making the world a better place, I don't know of a better way to do it than to start with your own children. Once, once you start getting further away from yourself, you know people like, let's just say, like the government or the Federal Reserve or these things, and you, and um, you're, if you're putting your efforts in those areas, those are areas where you have essentially no influence at all. You have no power to control what the Federal Reserve does or what they do in Washington or. The the, uh, the EU and the like, but the closer you get to yourself in your interpersonal relationships, the more power you have, the more influence you have, the more ability you have to make the world a better place, to bring freedom and, and happiness to those around you. And at the you know the parent child level, that's where you have the greatest power. Well, actually, I, I take that back. Where you have the greatest power is with yourself. You have the, the absolute most power and influence on yourself and and them. Um, changing your own thinking and your own actions. The second would be then your, your interactions with your child. So I spend a lot of time on choice conversations, talking about parenting, a lot of different guests on there. And it's something that it, it um, you know, it, it brings a lot of joy to my life. I have a daughter, she's 10 years old. And you know, if you look around, a lot of people aren't really that happy being parents. A lot of people, you know, I think they've even done studies on this where people who don't have kids, on the average, are happier than people who do have kids. And that's really sad, you know, when you think about it. It's what, 
what would God possibly lead to that? And the thing is, most people, they parent how they were parented. And a lot of the people don't even spend any time thinking about what the correct way to parent is. They're like, you know, I, I, I was parented a certain way, and I turned out all right. What do I need to go read some books or you know, listen to podcasts, go to, to parenting workshops? What do I need that for? I, I turned out all right. But at the same time, these, these people, they don't necessarily have a lot of uh, self-reflection or self-awareness, that thing we talked about earlier, to realize that maybe they're not all right. <laughs> you know, that maybe if you're, not, if you're not ever taking a look at yourself, it's really easy to sit here and, and, and say, you know, oh, I'm fine. I turned out all right. But if you're, they're never having any critical self-reflection, you know, how do you even know that? And when most people, when they do start looking at, down a path of, of uh, self-knowledge, self-awareness, they discover that, gee, I'm, I'm actually, I'm not all right. And one of the things they discover is, you know, there were things in the, that happened in their childhood or maybe their relationship with their parents or maybe going to school or that uh, were not the most nurturing of things that could have happened for them. And so when you, you, for me, when I went down this path, I mean, that was one of the things really driving me to, to have these conversations about parenting, to improve my own parenting, was just providing for my daughter the, the best environment she could have, the most nurturing environment she could have, so that she could have that psychological health. You know, physical health, of course, pe- people spend a lot of thought on uh, physical health, but not always so much on the, you know, the psychological health and, and happiness, you know. What, what would it require for me to be happy? What would it require for me to be successful? You know, be that success as defined by your, your, um, your income, financial success, or be it success in your relationships. You know, I, I want my daughter to be somebody that has great friendships. I want her to, to find a companion someday and, and be, you know, have just like a, a wonderful, wonderful marriage or, you know, a wonderful partner that really enriches her life. And then have a, a really... Um, enriching, be really successful as a mother on her own right, you know? So what, what are the things I can do to set her up for that? And I mean, we can get into some of the specific strategies if you would like. Yeah, I, definitely, because uh, it's kind of, it's, it's an unschooling, uh, I'll borrow Dana Martin's uh, theme again, uh, because what we, what we get given to society by the, the propaganda machine is uh, the consumerism and the uh, uh, mass uh, the mask of beauty, uh, I think I call it. Uh, and, and then our uh, our priorities and our values are set in. And, and so uh, then they have the institutions provided for us to uh, help reinforce that uh, that uh, concept along the way. So in end school, we, uh, we can go back and rethink uh, how it is that we uh, allow for the choices and, and to become that person. Because in a way with the children, then we are... Uh, you know, as guardians, uh, we're kind of entrusted uh, as shepherds, you know, in, in a sense, to make sure that, uh, that they're better equipped. And so with that, uh, how, we can talk about how you did it and, and also some other ideas perhaps of, uh, that you've learned from others then in therapy. Sure, sure. So I'll start by telling you that these ideas that we're talking about today of self-awareness and, you know, raising emotionally healthy kids and like, I didn't come across these ideas until after I was already a father. So I was somebody who had, had no self-awareness, was your average mainstream guy, you know, raised in the traditional schools where, you know, you're told to trust authority and the things that were important to me were things that were not really important at all. They were just uh, things like uh, I was really into sports. You know, that's, uh, I mean, sports are fine. I mean, they're, they're, they're fun entertainment. But they, at the end of the day, that's all they are is entertainment, you know. 
And I was one of these people that was addicted to sports and spent just an insane amount of time watching sports, reading sports articles, playing fantasy football, that sort of thing. And and somewhere along the way, I just discovered I wasn't happy and that my relationships were not where I wanted them to be. And that led me down this path of of self-exploration and improving my parenting. And what I found... Pretty early on, once I started going down the path of, of self-knowledge, was there's a book by a gentleman's name is Thomas Gordon. And it's called Parent Effectiveness Training. And to this day, I, I still think it's the best parenting book that I've read as far as practical advice for strategies for, for uh, parenting your, your children. And some of the concepts that are in Parent Effectiveness Training are things like for one, it's, it's not using violence and coercion to get your children to do what you want them to do. It's more based on negotiation, working together, understanding where they're coming from, you know, what, what their need is that they're trying to, to address, and then working with your children uh, on a strategy that is acceptable to both the child and to you. You know, so uh, the educational example is one. You know, the um, you want your ch- child to, to learn, so that they can become independent, successful adults. And uh, your child, I think, in general, children want to learn too. They want to learn and become independent. And and um, you know, if you see you see two kids like a, a two siblings, the younger ones often try to do what the older sibling is doing. You know, where a lot of times you'll see the kids wanting to do what the parents are doing. They want to learn things and to, to um, not be so dependent. There's like an innate, innate drive to learn. Now, the public schooling system, I think, squashes a lot of that, and that's a whole topic in itself. I'm sure we could spend hours just talking about education, but, but there is that innate drive to learn. But then there's the strategy of, well, how do we get to that point where the, the kids learn and um, become independent and, you know, lead them into being successful adults. You know, the strategy that is in the mainstream is you send your kids off to these buildings that look awfully like prisons where they spend all day sitting in a chair and, um, you know, not being able to move too much. And, you know, when the bell rings, they, they, they're allowed to get up and move to another room and then they have to sit there until the bell rings again and like, that's just one strategy for meeting that need. There are other strategies, you know, like Dana Martin talking about unschooling. Uh, my daughter personally is in a Montessori school. And, um, there, you know, there's a lot of different strategies for it. There's some homeschooling methods that work. And you can sit down if your child doesn't want to go to school because they don't like it, which is a pretty common thing. You know, that's just a strategy. You can sit down and work with them and say, okay, well, I, you know, it's, it's important to me that you get an education, but this is just one way of doing it. Let's see if we can find another way. There are, um, you know, I mean, that's just one example of, that's actually a rather hard one. There's a lot of easier scenarios we can start with than that. Things like, you know, the child wanting to uh, wear, wanting to go outside without a jacket on and you wanting them to wear a jacket, that sort of thing. <laughs> but, um, you know, that's the parent effectiveness training. It, so it's, it's, it's one, it, it starts with negotiation and, and not using the, the power you have as the bigger, uh, more knowledgeable person in the relationship to use that power to, to dominate your child. You know, that's, and it, it gives you some really great strategies for doing it. That is, that is, it's <laughs> gonna be more, I, let me interrupt you. I'm sorry. I'm going to answer this phone in a second, but I want to ask, hold on just a minute. Hold on just a second. Uh, this this question comes from Flash. Uh, independence, independent, independence is a, a misdirection. So Flash, come in and better respect that question. And uh, let me. Let me oh, you want you something. want you want me to clean that up a little bit? Well, I just see that uh, society is actually interdependent because it's a bunch of different things all connected to each other that alone don't get anything done. So the idea of independent, how do you live independent? And what, what exactly does it mean to be independent? 
that's it. Well, I guess I lost everybody. What happened here? Oh, well, we hear you. I hear you. Okay. Well, that was it. I was just... Okay, well, I, I don't see it the same. Or do you want me to take it? Well, no, I'm this, you're the guest. Me and, me and Vince talk all the time. So, <laughs> right. you know, you're the guest. Yeah, and, and I'm sorry. I didn't even hear it. So, for my sake, let me just but, ask you to restate it. I was, I'm yeah. sorry, I had a phone call. Well, what I'm, uh, what I'm getting at is society is a lot of components that are all interactive. Interactive. One thing can't do anything by itself. It all needs the other arms to make things happen. So where does the independent come in? I think it's a misdirection to take your mind off that you're just constantly being fucking controlled from every side there is. And that's okay. what I think. So, well, I think, uh, if I can interject, uh, the idea, though, is... Uh, the independence comes in realizing that there's forces that you uh, cannot affect, and and by controlling yourself, in a sense, then uh, that's where the, the start begins. And then as, uh, as that is reflected in the offspring, and possibly even their offspring, or their offspring's offspring, then and that, that's the go for the uh, eventual uh, effect for, for tipping it to the right direction. Is that kind of right? Well, there you go. That that's where I, where I get lost in the first place. And when you start doing the dualism shit, is it right? Is it wrong? Is it Republican? Is it black? Is it purple? I mean, all that identifying stuff is wonderful if you're writing a paper about a thing. But when you actually use it and you value other people as things, something gets lost in all this translation. So, Flash, I think. What might be happening here is is maybe just a semantics issue. Probably right, exactly, and so, because so my this is where, right you know, the trivia is a good right. thing is exactly. that you go back and start with definitions and the like. So very very good, yeah. You know the, the definition of in, uh, defining uh, what I mean by independence. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm really meaning more along the lines of just teaching the child skills. So an example of this, how I'm using independence. When a child is born, it doesn't have any ability to feed itself. And at some point, you know, it's, it's either, you know, it's nursing or maybe it's, you, um, it, it learns, it gets the motor skills to be able to hold a bottle or to be able to uh, stick food into its mouth. Mm -hmm. But even there, it doesn't know how to then gather the food. Right. You know, it, it's, it's, count, it's counting on mom and dad or the caregiver, caregiver to put the, uh, the bowl of applesauce in front of it before it can then start shoveling it in, right? Right. So this is just, what I'm talking about is teaching skills that it needs so that, that this, the child isn't dependent on the parent or isn't dependent on other people. So now my daughter's 10 years old, at least by the way I'm using independence, she has a lot of independence. She could get by without me probably for weeks at home alone <laughs> you know, if I stacked the the pantry with food and, and the like. Right. Because right. if she's hungry, she right. can just go, go meet, make pull something meat. out of the, the cupboard and make a sandwich. She can, right. she can, um, you know, find, pull out, you know, pull out yogurt and a spoon and, and, and help herself out. Well, that's very that's similar to, when I mean independence. Is, does there still, does no. that mean she's completely independent? I, I've taught her to be independent. Well, I mean, that yogurt's coming from somewhere, right? I mean, it's, and it's not like, it's just coming from me. I'm getting it from a store, and it, it got to the store because the truck driver drove it there, and then it got awesome. from there because you know it was in a, a plant where they packaged it, and then it got you know all the way back to the farmer who uh, has the cows, and then the farmer's not independent because he's got mm -hmm. electricity and, and all this other stuff, and he's you know he's getting food brought to him that from the grocery store and blah blah blah. There's yeah, I mean they're they're independents all around, but I'm, that's not what I'm talking about when I say independence. That's I think a probably a distraction from the direction we were going, which mine is more just, and maybe it would just be cleaner to, to say, I'm teaching my daughter skills. Yeah. So yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. So I didn't, I didn't, be, look, I didn't mean to be mean about it. I just thought the idea of being independent when we're really need to learn, you know, there's a time and a place to be interdependent and there's a time to stand on your own. And 
the two aren't taught equally, so we have a very unbalanced life. Hey, my dog loves me, man. She backs me to the wall. Yeah, she And she don't even speak English. Hey. Well, anyway, you know, that that's the whole point is, like you said, semantics. Because my understanding of certain words that I've listened to over the course of the conversation take me where I want to go. Has nothing to do with you. You're just telling a story and I'm listening to it. And I'm going to interpret it however my fucked up little mind wants to, to take it and where it wants to go. And I think having the ability to look at it with that kind of sense of humor thing, it, it kind of helps in the long run. I mean, it sounds harsh at the front, right up front, but if you, you know, I take things kind of light and make fun of a lot of shit while I'm thinking it through. And I, I agree You're with anti-semantic yeah. anyway. Well, only, only on my father's side. But, yeah, you know, it's, well, it goes to that, it goes to the, the outlook on, on reality. You know, people see what they want to see and how they want to see it. It's not like you're driving, your, your opinion doesn't have the ability to drive me anywhere. Mine does. So I'm interpreting your words with my education. And it takes me where I go. And, you know, there you have it. And I'm not agreeing or disagreeing. Huh? Go ahead, I'm sorry. Well, I wasn't agreeing or disagreeing with what he was talking about. I just took I took a turn on that one word. It just slapped me right in the face. Independent? What? Because my, my version of independent in, in my history is, that's the last place I want to be, is independent. That's fucking boring and dull. I like the connection to other people in the long run. Yeah, I'm not, yeah. See, yeah, I think that... that uh, you, Semantic, you define that uh, independent thing as isolation. Yeah, yeah, not needing anything in anybody, yeah. Because you can make do all by yourself. You don't need them. That's where my mind goes with it, because that's the way I see that word. Well, you're a wandering Jew after all. Right, but he said in the beginning, semantics is that. Well, yeah, of course. So, there you have it. It's just a bunch oh, of... Oh, semantics. I thought you were saying semantics. Oh, no, no. Uh, put the bottle down and step away from the microphone, brother. I'm having that whiskey. Thank you. Yeah, I had whiskey. Man, I'm hitting the pipe for that one. That was brilliant. Absolutely. Well, I didn't, you know, I didn't want Chris to think I was trying to, to you know, pick an argument about the definition of a word, but we do that on the on the computer all the fucking time. It's insane. Well, we get we, yeah. Yeah. We well. Words after all. Well, and okay. It, but, it mean the same thing? Hey, look. Uh, it means sir, what you, you want. Let me put that together over to what matters. You know, uh, that banner. Thank you, sir. I'll grab that link. Y'all can check it out. Read that on there uh, about language and what we say. And, you know, we might mm -hmm. be using the same words, but they don't have the same meaning. So, right. In conversation, right. That's the, that's where the trivium is important. Yeah. yeah. In our conversation, right, right, Chris. I agree completely. And I concur. Oh, so. <laughs> Oh, man. We're fucking up if we're all agreeing on something. Something's wrong somewhere. <laughs> but, you know, going back to your, your point, Flash, about not wanting to be independent. Yeah, meaning, well, that's where I got like to. Isolation, yeah. I mean, isolation is a, a form of torture. Yeah, you know, I find, yeah. They will, they, find when they put you in isolation in prison, it's not because they're wanting you to uh, have a nice nurturing environment and be successful in it. <laughs> Make some pottery. Like I'm talking about with, uh, parenting my daughter, you know? Yeah. Isolation is a form of torture and, and connect, connection with others, community and the like, that's, those are universal needs that everyone has, which is why when it's taken away, it, it's like, it is torture. There is like a, a biological need for, for people in connection with others. So you, you see people will um, start going crazy sometimes when they're, they're put in isolation. Yeah, it's so, proven over and over and over. They right. even made movies about that there shit. Yeah. <laughs> so, all right, if we get, on, if we get to that, 
to the point where we're agreeing on our terms, you know, mm-hmm. there's, I think we're, we're, we agree on uh, what we're talking about here. Oh, yeah. No, well, look, you know, people, people have been um, taken over by the government since I was a kid. You know, I saw the whole thing from the start to where it is now. You know, when I first went to school uh, back in, what, 1964, so, you know, there was a lot more freedom. I must have walked, a, I don't know, half a mile to school when I was five years old. So, and there was none of this stranger danger and pedophilia and all that shit came fucking, I don't know, what, 20, 30 years later. But uh, it seems that the reality of life is overblown through the press and the TV and movies and all this stuff and they lead us down roads that really don't exist to keep us afraid of each other and it works like a charm let me hear Dick real quick that is is true uh, I I would say that probably that uh, most likely this is that uh, the the problems with grabbing kids all that stuff that uh, happens these days it still happened then it just wasn't highlighted uh, by the prostitutes um, I know when I was a little kid, well, I mean, six, seven years old, you know, walking to school, it, and it was, uh, it was 15 miles uphill in both directions, and I looked at the snow, four foot. But, yeah, no, really, it's a whole different world, for sure. But uh, I know, uh, as a kid, my mom told me horror stories that uh, made me very aware that there were bad people out there. So, you know, being, being sheltered or whatever is, was not, you know, that not being sheltered, I should say, is a, a step that she used for uh, uh, my independence of uh, and being able to uh, have an uh, understanding of, uh, you know, possibilities in the world and to be able to make sure that my choices did not, uh, you know, they did not fall out of this lesson very well. They were not put me into uh, a bad place in life. Um, yeah, you know, for, for a while in my life, I just went right straight to the all. Well, yeah, but the way we got here was planned. This has been done on purpose. I think so. I don't. What do you I think, don't, I think Chris, uh, you, think, you think that that uh, is on purpose? You know, flashes government, but. Really, government is, is not that it. I mean, it's uh, it's just a, a part of the mechanism that does the it, or is the it. Uh, the beast or the machine, uh, the manipulation factors, because it's so multifaceted. Mm-hmm. People then get hung, hung up on their semantics and try to uh, uh, define it down. Like Chris was saying, I, well, I'm, you know, against the Federal Reserve and this and that. <laughs> well, see, I think it's certainly important that understand all that, and, they, and they understand as much of the, of the mechanisms that uh, are, are driving things, and they make the effect and, and, uh, and change where we can, make a right where, uh, to the wrong where we can. So, I'll just start by saying that I'm no fan of government, I'm, I'm an anarchist, and I believe in the non-aggression principle. Oh, that's, and that's good. I think that... You yeah. just make... You just made a lot of fans right here at Real Liberty Media with that story. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I believe that the majority of what the government does is not helpful and can be, you know, even uh, the opposite of helpful as far right. as right. leading to, um, you know, desirable outcomes. But the question is, what do you do with that knowledge? Exactly. Does that mean you go protest? Does that mean you go uh, try to get Ron Paul elected or Rand it, Paul elected? Or it means you're rep- awake. That's I all mean, it means. You know you've well, been lied to. That's all sure, it means. I mean, it, that's fine, but uh, the, the, my, my focus is what, what can I actually have power over? What can I actually have influence? Where can I actually have change in my life? And I find that if I start looking at politics, I have no power there. That I'm, I'm completely neutered in that arena. You know? and, it's, <laughs> and I think that probably is by design. They, they, yeah. At least in the United yeah. States, yeah. they box you into this two-party system. Yeah. It's not supposed to be a system. I mean, if you look at the Constitution, <laughs> it doesn't say anything in there about a two-party system. 
know, if this is just something that has been slapped on, it's not part of the system. It's been slapped on as a way to give people a false dichotomy of, well, you either have to go Republican or Democrat, and either way, the government wins. So yeah, it's all, the, all the part of the, uh, that uh, misdirection, uh, I was going to say something, and I looked up there and clicked it. Um, but as we come up uh, to the top of the hour, as, uh, as we're shifting positions here uh, at the halfway point, well, we're over the halfway point. This is uh, number 15 out of uh, 26 plus the actors, so we are actually kind of halfway through. Yeah. Um, well, we're, you we're missed the 420, the so I took it. Yeah, we missed the 420, but we'll do that again. Uh, and that's part of the positive direction. As the optimist, and uh, as, as Chris was saying, what can we do? to make that better effect for ourselves. And That's I'm, it. Uh, I've started, I've started uh, these past few days, I'm now uh, going to re-implement the exercise in nutrition. Um, so i am got my garden prep going on, uh, which is really good exercise. And, uh, and it keeps you off the radio. Um, I think uh, that's... Food, water, and, uh, excuse me, um, food, water, and exercise is the most important things that, that we can do for ourselves. And the fact that they need to be clean, I guess, is uh, beyond the uh, I was trying to remember what it was back here in, uh, oh, that um, wait, that's what it was, a oh, wait, I remember now. So, <laughs> I was being funny. Hans Dietrich asked if I'm awake, and I said, I am awake. And uh, Gregner says uh, a party, uh, a party, wait, a party for a dead man. And I said, yeah, you do get it. So that in the sense of the independence is that uh, um, withdrawing is where you can uh, from that uh, uh, that doc- document that owns you, you know, other than yourself, and, and escaping uh, the dependence that you have on the authority. So. You know, government is only part of it. It's very multifaceted. So, with the uh, with the idea towards uh, the optimist side of things, where we can make it better, because um, that's really all we can do. What we can. Uh, let's talk about uh, health, nutrition, exercise, and uh, then we'll then we'll go on more uh, towards the end to the. Uh, uh, as far as spirituality and, and uh, right thinking, in a sense. But we'll start with the body. Yeah, absolutely. That is a great way to improve the way you feel. And, and also it, it improves your thinking as well. I mean, exercise is great for your brain. Uh, the best thing, you, best thing you can do for your brain is improve your diet. And, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's hard to be happy when you feel like shit. You know, and, and maybe, uh, I don't know, you know, the listeners right now, I'm sure right, they have a wide range as far as ages and levels of health. But if you don't take care of yourself, it's going to catch up with you. You know, maybe you feel fine right now, you're in your 20s and 30s or something like that. But time you start getting up to 50s, 60s, if you haven't been taking care of yourself, you know, there's, you can age at... A 60-year-old 60 60 year by somebody who took care of themselves looks a whole lot different than 60 years old by somebody who didn't take care of themselves. So, you know, I've, I've seen it many times in the, the people around me. So, I'm personally, I'm in, in my 30s, and, you know, I'm in the best shape of my life right now because so these things are important to me now, where when growing up, this was not something that was ever important to me or was anything that I was taught. You know, I had to learn it on my own. So, for me, I guess nutrition is probably the, where you start. You know, if you're wanting to lose weight, for example, which is, you know, if you're overweight, one of the best things you can do for your health is, is to, to lose some weight. And that's like 90% your diet. You know, it's only uh, 10% you the movement, your, your exercise, and the like. So, for me, I try to eat whole foods. So, as opposed to processed foods, and I, I, I subscribe more towards, I'm sure you've probably heard of the paleo diet, 
or there's, there's a variation on the paleo diet called uh, primal. It's from a, a gentleman by the name of um, Mark Sisson. He wrote a book called uh, The Primal Blueprint, which is an excellent guide to getting your health in order. So essentially the, the concept behind the paleo diet is that the human race evolved you know, for, for thousands of years, I think the human race is, you know, 100,000 and change years old. And then, you know, of course, the human race descended from species, you know, before that, that were very, very close to the human race, you know, it's looked, looked a whole lot like the human race and the like. So, I mean, you can just go back, you know, probably, you know, a million years or more and still um, look at our ancestry. And, and over that time frame, the human race ate one certain way. And that was a hunter-gatherer diet. And it's only been, you know, probably, what, the last 10,000 years that there's been agriculture? And it's just a, a real small section of the human evolution has been with agriculture. And the human body didn't evolve on the kind of diet we eat now, especially the, the diet in our modern life, where with all those processed foods, I mean, People have only been eating that way for a hundred years. You know, some of these these things that they're sticking in foods, like the the um, you know the high fructose corn syrup and like they, they use soy as fillers and all kinds of stuff. A lot of this stuff, I mean, people have only been eating this way in the last fifty years. You know, and you go back a hundred years and nobody was eating this. So the, the the body didn't evolve eating this kind of diet, and it struggles when you give it to it. Now it doesn't mean you're gonna you know, eat a sandwich and fall over dead the next day. It's it's a slow, it's a slow death kind of thing. It's like, like um, the, it after, like, go ahead, Vince. I, just real quick, you know, it's like an engine, you know, you run it on good fuel or, uh, you know, if you have contaminated fuel, your, your performance is inhibited. Uh, and eventually it's going to wear that motor out, you know. So that's kind of the perspective as far as the body, you know, and what, what, we, uh, what kind of fuel we feed Right, right, exactly. So, so yeah, so to get back to it, you know, I focus more on eating whole foods, you know, not processed. Eat a lot of fruits and vegetables, uh, healthy meats, healthy fats, and try to avoid sugar, avoid processed foods, avoid grains. Grains, there, there's a ton of studies showing just how bad grains are for you. And, and like I said, grains have only been in the human diet for the most part, since we've had agriculture, which has basically just been, you know, the last 10,000 years. So cut out grains and uh, cut out some of these uh, processed fats, the unhealthy fats. So this would be like vegetable oil and um, canola oil. And there, there's, a, there's a number of them. But, uh, yeah, the oils, I, the healthy oils are the ones that um, – that, the FDA may not have told you it was the healthy ones. <laughs> Their well, story is a little different. Any oil well, you can't smoke is bad for you. That is uh, my my opinion on on oil. The 420 report found the best beaver. Yeah, was that? Like. But I, I use uh, the only oils I use that uh, well that I intentionally consume other than um, being out other other in somewhere else at French house or whatever or out in once in a while. Eating, which is really bad. The, uh, the oil I use is uh, the coconut oil. Yeah, coconut oil is great. Coconut oil is really healthy for you. Uh, butter is, it is fine. You use real butter and not the crap fake butter that you process stuff you get at the store. But real butter, it's even better if you can get it uh, from grass-fed animals. So just like the human race, cows did not evolve eating grains either. They evolved eating grasses. So if you can get cows your dairy from, from cows that are grass-fed, it's healthier. And, I mean, they can tell that just by analyzing the nutrients in the dairy products. They have a different nutrient profile from a grass-fed animal than from one that was fed on, on grains. So, you know, I have grass-fed butter that I use regularly, and it, it's uh, it's great for you and, and very delicious. So those are the two, coconut oil, grass-fed oil. Olive oil is good for you as well, but you just don't want to cook with olive oil because it, it's not stable at high temperatures, and so that can... Give, it, it, um, it gets oxidized and basically can cause inflammation and um, eventually lead to things like lead to, to cancer and heart disease and the like. I mean, it's, it's still, olive oil is still better than canola oil, for example, but 
because those things also, you know, when you cook with them, they, they're not stable at high temperatures either. But, but yeah, so uh, animal fat is also good for cooking, or is a, is a fine oil to use. Basically, animal fat, butter, and coconut oil is really where you want to stick to. And if, if you're having, um, if you're not cooking, and you're like, maybe you want some oil on your salad, olive oil is acceptable as well. But I, I would limit my oils to that. And what well, what am I gonna and, what am I gonna uh, do with my suntan oil? <laughs> right, yeah. Wow! Now I really, I really feel left out now. <laughs> it puts the Martian on it. <laughs> Actually, if you, if you want an oil for your skin, um, no, your no, hands, like, no, no. I was joking. In, in the <laughs> well, but in all seriousness, though, coconut oil is great for your skin. Uh, there's some other oils that are good for your skin as well. So, you know, in um, in the winter. The air becomes dry, you know, because it's there's not as much moisture in the air. And, oh yes, there and, is. <laughs> and you can get like cracked hands and the like. So if that's something you you suffer from in, in the winter, if you get your hands are getting cracked or whatever, you can stick some oil on them daily, some coconut oil, or um, and that, that's good to help with that. But and remember too that uh, olive oil, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of bad fat out there on the market, and uh, so. It'd be very important to make sure you're sourced. Popeye ain't going to like that. There's some type of, uh, you know, big olive, olive oil mafia out there. That, <laughs> yeah, there. Hey, you're making jokes, but there used to be. Yeah. Didn't you see the Godfather, man? He started out <laughs> moving olive oil, man. No, yeah, but, 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 but you're right, Vince, so. though. The, you do need to be able to trust your store, source with olive oil. That is one of the problems with olive oil. Is the label will say olive oil. You'll read the ingredients, and it will say the ingredients will be olive oil. Mm-hmm. And everything that's in there is not olive oil. <laughs> They'll put other oil in there, and um, it's it's crazy that the FDA or whoever oh, yeah. that allows that to happen. Oh, those crooks! Because, uh, what, what else can we expect? Yeah. Like like honey, honey as well. Honey is. Can uh, be high for just one cup, and still be says honey, and have nothing else. Uh, remember that uh, you are what you eat, or uh, as Popeye says, uh, "Yum what I am." I don't get out of there. Seeing what she used to be. Yeah, so I, I'm a big fan of, of getting your food locally. You know, the, the farmers market is great. We have. My family, we subscribe to a, a CSA. It stands for Community Sponsored Agriculture. Awesome. So it's yeah. It's, for those of you who aren't aware, it's basically just a, it's a farm, a local farm where you can um, you know make an agreement with your farmer that you're going to pay them a hundred dollars a month, and they're going to give you a couple of bags. Of, they're going to give you like a bag or two groceries a week or something like that, fresh off their farm. And um, you know, I can go out to the farm and, and uh, pet their cows and look to see how they're treating them, and you know and and it, it, at least mine is the, the CSI, the CSA that we subscribe to is uh, organic and the like. And so it's a great way to do it. And another thing about getting your food locally is it, um, well, it's more nutritious because it's picked when it's ripe. So if you don't get your food locally, like most of the food that you get at the store is not local. Even the, the, Fruits and vegetables are not local. They're shipped from, you know, often I think it's like an average of, you know, a thousand miles they're shipped. And so what they do is they pick them when they're green, ship them to, you know, the local distri- distribution center or whatever, and then before it's stuck on your, the shelves at your grocery store, they spray chemicals on them to artificially cause them to ripen. So, I, uh, I used to drive a truck and go out to a lot, what they call Holland, Holland Garbage is the, uh, technical town in the industry. We're going out there to, you know, the, the San Joaquin Valley, uh, picking up produce in Salinas, California. So, and other experiences would lead me to say that the, uh, uh, not just 3,000 miles across across the entire continent here, but uh, a lot of times you, you've got to figure in an average, too, of how this, uh, this stuff is, is broken. Uh, and, and that's what happened. I, I hauled a load of shrimp one time to uh, San Francisco from Chicago, and that stuff, the manifest on that stuff, it was on a barge out in the Great Lakes there for, I don't know, a long time in this freezer thing, uh, and it was shipped, uh, I can't remember, but it had a very, very long trip, trip 
if it started uh, down somewhere in the Gulf of Mexico, but it, it, uh, it made a real huge circle to get through uh, San Francisco. Uh, San Francisco Street. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I didn't even get that shrimp. Boy, I'll tell you what. Um, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, there's a couple reasons why, uh, at least with fruits and vegetables, that it's better to have them locally that, you know, that first of all, those chemicals that they sprayed on them, um, yeah, I sure as hell know that our ancestors weren't eating foods that had that chemical sprayed on them because they artificially ripened, so who knows what that's doing to you. Yeah, so that's, that's uh, strawberries, they, they package them up, and then they stack them on pallets, people have to pallets, wrap it with the uh, plastic, and then they gas it, they put, put off the gas in there where uh, they're ripening uh, as they're rolling down the road. Yeah. Well, then the other thing is they don't taste as good when they're ripened that way. You can tell the difference if you've had one that was picked ripe or one that was picked and it was still green. Oh, so it's yeah. a taste. And then the nutritional value is not as high because, I mean, the, the, the strawberries, for example, the nutrients that are in them, they're absorbing those from the soil. So the longer it's on the vine, the more time it has to absorb those nutrients. And it's, if you pull it off when it's, when it's still green... It's not going to have nearly as many. So you're eating food that's less nutritious. It's it's more empty. And you compare this to you know like the human race. Not only did they not involve did we not involve uh, with our agriculture, but the foods that they were eating. I mean, these were wild. And the wild foods are really there's a different nutrient profile in wild foods compared to the ones that are even if you're getting it from your your farmer's market and it was local, you know. So. The, um, yeah, but the eating, eating a, a diet of wild foods is a little difficult, so I settle for getting from my local farmer. <laughs> I, uh, I, I've been accused of uh, grazing. Uh, one of your mind says, you don't love up, or you can, are you finished grazing out there? But I, uh, yeah, I, I eat off uh, the plants, the weeds. Yeah. Uh, for me, it works really good. I even eat a little bit of poison ivy over here. But, uh, I don't even get poison ivy now. But there's a lot of weeds that uh, are very beneficial. And kind of, I'm not telling nobody to eat poison ivy, by the way. But I'm telling you, I have poison ivy. It hurts me. Yeah, there's, uh, there's a lot that you can do out there grazing there. So different techniques for, uh, that, that you can implement, even if you don't have any room, uh, with some container plants. So I'm working on building raised beds. This is, uh, if I say thin soil, it might be exaggerating to might be closer to say that it's almost no soil here. But I do have a little where I'm, uh, I'm chopping all the grass up and uh, bringing an inch or two of topsoil with it and piling it up. And, and then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to concentrate all that stuff into a, a raised platform and uh, grow some inches out of that. So uh, even though, and I'm doing that because I don't have any topsoil to, to put in from, so I'm going to make my own. Uh, a lot of ways to doing that. Uh, important to know how to uh, get the proper nutrients into uh, the soil that you're going to use to uh, produce the fuel for your body. Uh, aquaponics. Uh, I think it's interesting that even, not even on a large scale, but that you can have the possibility of setting up a small tank to uh, just very minimal in your uh, window seal there, to in the kitchen or whatever, to uh, uh, produce just a, a salad size uh, container of, of, of fresh green. And uh, the greens that uh, the chlorophyll, all that life that comes in there, is uh, one of the most uh, incredible uh, means of correcting the, your insides, uh, changing your, your pH. Uh, disease, you know, it thrives in, in sick bodies. I'm looking at a dog down the road, and he's ate up with ticks, right? And uh, I suspect they may have heartworms. So when an animal gets sick like that, they're more successful. When they're attacked not only by these uh, external parasites, you can see that uh, internally as well. Uh, and, and, and the diseases, as cancer and so forth. So chewing is a word that I've tried to eliminate from my uh, vocabulary. But uh, I, have, I find correlation to apply correction. And you know, you, you apply that in your uh, physical thing and uh, and yarn. Uh, that's just it. Uh, dealing with the uh, situation in life and so forth. Um, do you, uh, Chris, do you take the. Uh, I know, uh, Flash, he's, uh, he's going to be doing some, some gardening. Uh, we'll ask him about his endeavors in a minute. Uh, Chris, are you uh, 
Comparing any little containers or comparing the little garden spot or anything? Yeah, we have a, a, a small garden here. We just moved, so my wife's going to have to uh, rebuild the garden. I, I, I help out. She's the one that takes the uh, the lead on that one as far as uh, <laughs> our garden together. But we had a pretty substantial garden before. Now, right now, the, the, the house we bought, they had the previous owners had a, uh, a little garden of spices, so we're enjoying those. And it's just about time to start planting some of our own. But you know, gardening is a great activity in several ways. I mean, one, you're getting involved in the food. You're, you know, most of us are just going out to the grocery store and, and, and uh, buying food off the shelves or worse yet, going to, to the drive through and getting some fast food crap. But here you're getting involved in, the, in your food, but you're getting, you're getting healthy food. You're getting, you know, local um, if you're doing it yourself, you can make sure it's organic. You're not spraying anything on it. And you also, you're getting outside and, and being active. You know, one of the things that leads to illness in our society and leads to, to early aging is being sedentary. You know, we're, we're so sedentary. And again, the human race didn't evolve sitting at a desk with a, a laptop in front of them. You know, the human race was evolved moving around all the time and, and uh We've become so sedentary in our modern life, but the garden is a way, one way to get you up and moving, get you outside, getting that sunlight. Um, you know, one of the things that most people, in, at least in the United States, most people in the United States are deficient in vitamin D. Uh, one part of that is they're not eating a good diet. Another part of it is they're not getting enough sunlight. Our skin, you know, when, when sunlight hits our skin, our bodies will generate vitamin D. And... You know, they've shown correlations between people in the colder climates where the, you know, the sun sets earlier and, and um, rises later and, you know, the winters are longer. You know, they, they have higher rates of cancer and the like, you know, and it's uh, where vitamin D is something that can help to, to fight off cancer. And, uh, you know, anything you do to get outside and, and be active is going to help you. You know, you're getting fresh air, you're getting sunlight. Up, moving around, and uh, yeah, fever, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's 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 great. You can do it if um, you do it as make add in a community thing to it. So you can make it the family activity and have them working with you, and then you're encouraging healthy habits. You know, like if I get my daughter out there working with me in the, in the garden now, she's outside and having the same health benefits I am. We're getting that need for connection with another person, we're getting that met as well at the same time, you know, as we're working on nutrition, as we're working on getting outdoors, you know, well, as we're working on education, you know, learning better tactics for for uh, growing food and, and, and teaching that. And, you know, like you're talking about Vince with the, the topsoil and, and, you know, that's learning learning that. I and mean, these, are, these are skills that most people have lost. So it's... You it's know awesome. what time it is? Yep. One minute past the 420 report from the Buzz Beaver. That, that lazy bastard. Down, and it is the tree alive. Uh, cannabis. I remember it well. Like it was yesterday. I feel safer already. Absolutely. My well, oppressors have me. Me? Yeah. Well, Cirque is. Uh, I just do what she tells me. Well, <laughs> well yeah, but see, well, okay. Last year, she calls me from work and says, meet me, i um, got some tomatoes. <laughs> and, she, yeah, she brought home ten I don't know, about four foot tall tomato plants, and she actually grew tomatoes. So this year we're going to try doing a little bit more, uh, uh, I don't know, attention on it and start it and end it and all that. But I just do what she says because she cooks the food. <laughs> well, that sounds like a sense wisdom there. Well, sure, I mean, shit. I, 
I don't decide what she cooks, so, you know, she does. So, so how are you growing your tomatoes? I don't, well, you know what? We just... We stuck them in a wooden box with some <laughs> soil, and then I nipped and tucked every little leaf and shit until it only grew tomatoes. <laughs> Yeah, I watered those little babies two times a day, and I spoke to them and I cuddled them. So then, what about uh, what about some good vibrations? Well, she chopped the fuck out of them and made me some sandwiches, man. <laughs> that was a good vibration. You know, we, we was talking with uh, Larry Woods uh, on uh, vibrations. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, very, very interesting. Uh, he's talking about that cool design, that fitting around. Yeah, I'm going to try that. Pretty simple operation. Uh, I'll bet you anything this is with the vibrations that uh, make up what he is, I guess. So. Well, right. And it's just like, okay, it's just like what, what he was talking about earlier. People have been taught all the wrong things. And they don't know that. So when you introduce them to the idea that everything that you've been taught so far right now is based on bullshit, the first thing they do is stop yeah. listening. Then, then automatically they quit listening. Right, but that's the only way to interpret this. There is no other wow. way for it to actually penetrate. you got to hear it that way. And it's terrible. Sometimes the interpretation, like the first two letters of the, the word, Maybe you need to keep them in sometimes because then they just tune out, right? Well, you right. Somebody, they're stupid. Well, okay. Let us use the God thing for a moment, right? If if it's, if it's something, something, yeah. Well, whoever's God, but just the idea of it, and when you bring it to other people's attention with a with a, a chosen side of it, you're you're starting a conflict. Whether you mean to or not, that's all it's designed to do is get other people that disagree with you to fight. So instead of taking things personal and you know thinking of them as personal, discussing them openly, they completely take the whole fucking thing personal. Like every word is an attack on them, and, and it doesn't matter matter either side you're on the the fight. It's it's horrible to see. Really, it, I laugh at it. But it, I don't know, it's amusing at the time, and then later on I feel bad about laughing at people. But it's a no-win thing. You can't win. No, I, don't, I don't even look to try to win anything. But right, but okay, but I'm, I'm reading it through... Okay, but Vince, I'm reading it through my perspective, and I see it in competition, and I see it in vanity and shit like that, where somebody's trying to stand on somebody else's face so that they can look better than the person on the ground. And it's it's stupid to me. But it apparently it holds, I mean, it's like, it's in everything. Uh, the, the voting for Trump or Clinton or nobody or whatever. It, Trump it's, is our savior, man. He yeah. Who can talk bad about my Trump? What? Did, mean, you, my Trump. did you get that job as his personal ball washer? Uh, <laughs> I'm going to have a face in here. <laughs> Well, that's the kind of guy, and that's the, but he's the kind of guy that would have a guy to do that fucked up job too, <laughs> just to be a prick. <laughs> Sorry, I I had a joke. <laughs> I I have one too, and I'm, I'm mm. not Okay, I pushed the envelope too far there. No, I didn't. Well, it, it's. I, didn't, I, didn't, I don't know. Maybe I decide that that I talk about that's right. Maybe there is a line. It's a circle that sometimes you know when you're stepping over it, you know? Well, well, look, we, we live in a word game and it doesn't matter because all that matters is how you interpret what you hear. It doesn't matter to the rest of us, but people have this um, social gathering shit and they think that if you disagree with somebody it's an aggressive act. A disappoint, uh, you know, a disagreement is not the end of the fucking world. But they're made that way to keep us fighting about nonsense, and it works. You just, you just keep hitting somebody in the mouth until they shut up. They'll put disagreement. Well, yeah, sooner or later, but 
Yeah, that shit always comes back to bite. So, you know, it doesn't really work too well. I'm not much on the violence. You know, the older I get, too, it's like, shit, once you're in your 50s, if you still want to fight, there's probably something wrong with you and you need a good fight. Only on diet whiskey. Exactly. I mean, at, at, at certain points of time and age, you know, I think society kind of fucks us over with their interpretation of what a legal age is. Uh, you know what? I was thinking, um, there, there's kind of, where does, where does what we think, uh, interpretation or whatever, where does that uh, flow to the uh, spiritual part of man? And that's, that's a pretty big definition right there. What is a a spiritual man. You know, most people would say, you know, we've got a soul or a spirit, and, you know, not, yeah. well, maybe not most of these days, so there's many that you know, would say, you know, we're biological matter and uh, dead and stinking when, when we're gone. <laughs> but in, in the meantime, yeah. as we exist here, uh, there's certainly a lot of things that uh, we can't know. We, we, we can uh, have the interpretation in the Maybe there is a voice inside of us that uh, that speaks, and maybe sometimes we can listen. <laughs> so, well, where does where does that where does that bring us to? As who we are and where we are, and does it influence our our decision? Well, um, let me ask you a question, I, Vince. Well, let me ask you a question. Which interests you more of these two choices? Are you interested in what I'm doing, or are you interested in what you're doing? I have a great interest in what a lot of people do. Um, and, and I use that also for a uh, for betterment of myself, self uh, Okay, let me say this. If you're doing a terrible job of what you're doing, and I've done what you're doing, and I see it as a mistake and don't take the time to tell you, who's wrong? I think, yeah, I think it's both sides, yeah. You know, it's like, all right, we had a problem on WT, right? There's a kid, comes around, gets mad at people, says things he doesn't mean, and it went too far, and and he got he got um, punished for it, right? And I'm totally against social punishment. I mean, as far as the way society looks at it, punishment, they, they ban, and in the internet world, it's ban, delete, ignore. And, well, yeah, I, I, and, and well, this was a very long round conversation that we had that you and I served in. I came to agree that uh, uh, separation is not censorship. So there, there comes a time when, uh, even in a yeah. uh, uh, public platform, that it may necessitate the removal or exclusion, uh, possibly of a short period of time, even to the point of the, uh, exile. According to the social protocols that are acceptable by the majority, it's it's a no-win thing. It's always the same. Because right, because I'm I'm in the minority on that one, and I had my rows with the boy. I mean, me and him went round and round a few times, but I never never once did I want to see him banned. I just wanted to want him to get tired and go to sleep and we stop. Just got a timeout, so anyways, that's uh, right, right. That's how it you know, we, we learn from the experiences, and perhaps the next time we would consider an alternative uh, approach. To well, everything uh, goes back to the that. semantics. It does, doesn't it? Yeah, because I see it my way, you see it yours. Are we all, are we, yeah, are we all right, or are we all wrong? I think we're all right. Cough, cough. Keep working at it. It was, a good, it was a good one. A good one. I know. Well, you know, but the point of these things is is everything is a word game, and they're all played on words, but we're told that certain words mean certain things when they really don't. And then when somebody will come forward and say, Okay, this word means that. I've heard talk show people before. They, what they don't reference is where they got their knowledge from, so you can go, hey, I want to see that myself. I reference 
all my knowledge to uh, the paraphrase play group, aka me. All your knowledge. What What do you do about your experience? Does that Does that tell you or teach you anything, or do you just requ- just require knowledge? Well, I will give you the Homer Simpson Award then. Uh, stick your hand in the fire. Go, because I can't go. Donut. Does it hurt? Does it hurt? Donuts. Yeah, it's like voting, huh? Nothing like voting. Voting can change things. How? <laughs> Hey, we're moving into the uh, uh, final segment here, and uh, we're going to we're gonna get into the discussion of spirituality. <clears throat> so I, I, I really? Can't recap this. What is, a, what is that? I mean, this idea of what, life after death? Because I think uh, I think we might find a little definite, uh, perhaps, uh, I think Chris may, uh, maybe not, because I don't know what his uh, religion or non-religion or spirituality is, but uh, I think that we... Uh, <clears throat> My observations is that we share some uh, kindredness uh, in in the ideologies that we hold. Uh, sure. For me, it was what is self-evident. Uh, well, I don't know. I can't put words in your mouth. Then let, let me just hand you the mic and, and take take the lead in this topic. Sure. So when I talk about spirituality, I mean what I'm talking about is. There are spiritual practices that are centered on personal growth and mindfulness and experience, the self-knowledge, things of these nature. I'm not talking about religion. Um, to be honest, I've looked at different definitions of spirituality, and I, none of them really thrill me. So when I, when I say spirituality, I'm just talking about like top things that are under the subject of spirituality. Like if you went to Barnes & Noble or, you know, whatever your local bookstore is, and they've got a spirituality section. There you might find books on, like, yoga or meditation and uh, mindfulness and things of that nature. When I talk about spirituality, that's what I'm talking about, these spiritual practices, spiritual disciplines that can help you, they at least help me, to find purpose, can help me, to have harmony in my life and emotional equilibrium. And they truly introduce freedom into my life. And you, you say, what do you mean your meditation? How does that make you free? Well, let me give you an example. Have you ever been in a situation where you're talking with someone and you get angry and you say some things that after the fact, once you've calmed down, you wish you wouldn't have said. You're like, you know, that was pretty stupid to, to, to say that. You know, like, you, know, you were right in the things you were saying, but your approach to saying them was not helpful. You know, may, maybe you were right, but to, like, get in the person's face and scream at them or whatever, there was no, there was no possible benefit to that kind of thing. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm sure the answer is yes, because, I mean, we've all been in that situation where we've got got angry, got emotional, and did things that we would wish we wouldn't have. Some people have, this happens frequently, some people it's less frequently. But what meditation can do, what different mindfulness practices can do, is they can help you to put a space between stimulus and response. You know, and uh, there's a famous quote, and I, um, I can't remember what it, exactly all the, specifically how it goes, but basically, you know, there's a space between stimulus and response, and in, in there, that is your, the space where you have the ability to choose, to choose how you want to respond. Well, choice is just another word for, for freedom. I mean, choice is options. So an example would be, you know, if you're in a cage, you don't have very many options. So the more options you have, the more freedom you have. And these practices of meditation, they give me more freedom in my life because they give me more choices. I, I, I don't become a slave to my programming. I don't become a slave to my emotions. I'm able to, I, I won't say divorce myself from them because that, that my emotions are still an important part of me, but I can process those emotions and then, then decide how I want to respond rather than letting the emotions dictate how I'm going to respond. So, when I talk about spirituality, that, that's what I mean, is these different practices I have. 
That makes sense. It, it does. It's like, uh, I think for me, uh, I might describe it as an uh, inner search, uh, looking for some sense of uh, a connection in, in, the, in, the, in that, still, that still small voice inside. For me, um, I, I'm, I'm very happy uh, as far as uh, uh, how life works and you know, realizing it. And for me, this might be a spiritual description that uh, being in the flow of it, being in that positive direction. You know, if you're, if, uh, I don't know, I just, the universe is working really good for me uh, right now. And I, you know, I went through a real hard time through life as far as uh, experiences and stuff. And, uh, you know, for, for many of them, they, uh, I learned from the lesson from them. And, uh, uh, made, made it better for me in life, you know, as far as how I would respond to that. That, uh, that pause in between has become a very, uh, very important thing to me. I was on And learning to wait because, man, yeah, if, uh, if I had not heard of that, that one, uh, I would have been out there in Oregon and been, uh, I suppose, up there in federal jail with another uh, five folks up there. So pause, pause is definitely one of the most important things I think that one can do. Uh, but uh, but what else about the spirituality? What is it inside that we we seek a meaning for for life, a meaning of uh, what is and how the universe? Do we make a connection of uh, well, there is a good and there is an evil, and uh, they do they oppose one another, or is it the yin and yang, or um, and you know how how, how does that? Uh, we don't respond to life then. If it's, if it's a wall, it would be a negative, a right, a good, right, a positive. So uh, how, how do we use our spirituality to uh, interpret the, our view of the world and how we interact with one another? Uh, hey, do we have a responsibility to, to a God, to ourselves, to, to others, to the world? Um, is there somewhere that uh, everything connects together in? this frequency, this vibration uh, that makes the matter that is and, and its source and uh, do we uh, accept uh, a narrative and written for us uh, and suppose to great writings or sacred text or, or what have you um, or do we take the, do we take from those writings perhaps a, a sense of uh, uh, example of what is wrong and, and seeing where there may be a correction and to make a, a more better right decision in how we uh, if we then interact with, uh, in, in the future. And taking some of that from Hal Anthony, there are lessons from behind which uh, I think I've covered. No, there it is. Yeah. So just to make sure I say it right. <clears throat> I was listening to uh, one of his rebroadcasts this morning as I do this where I start the day with Hal Anthony. But anyways, he says, for foretold history being done. And, and he applied that into um, the application of, of society and, and the, uh, the uh, factions from government and so forth. But uh, also how that applies spiritually is uh, uh, what we learn from the now and, and how we apply it in the future. It's kind of a, you know, a what is to be. Uh, we decided. So there's there's a spiritual side to that that, uh, that I I can see in that manner. Uh, Chris. Yeah. So for me, spirituality it, it can it, it can bring purpose. So it, having it can add purposeful more purposeful living to my life. You know what what is what is my purpose in general on this planet? You know, there's there. Are, practices you can do to, to discover that and then you can examine yourself and examine your actions and say okay well what is the purpose of this current action and if it you know is this a, a is this even a fruitful action for me to be taking are these fruitful thoughts for me to be, be having you know if their purpose is just uh you know, it, it's pretty much just to, to cause angst in my life or whatever, then I don't want to have these thoughts anymore. Let's, so, I mean, a lot of the spiritual practices are about 
controlling your thoughts. Instead of letting your brain be the master of you, you be the master of your brain. Because you know, people have thoughts going in and out of their mind all the time. And some of them are not very rational. Some of them are uh, often not very helpful. And you can control your thoughts and have your thoughts become helpful, have your thoughts be positive. You know, so that's one of the things I focus a lot on in, in my spiritual practice is positive thinking and, and having a positive attitude because you can absolutely control your attitude. You know, it's the, probably the one thing you have the most control over in your life you know, when you get up out of bed in the morning, there's a whole lot of things you don't have any control over them. But how your attitude, how you're going to approach that day, that you have full control over that. And it can change your experience dramatically, being positive as opposed to being negative. And these practices I've found have, have been, been great for that. So, you know, I, like I talked about meditation. Um, Another one that's great for positive thinking, just getting your mind thinking positively, is there's, they're called affirmations. So affirmations is just stating things in, in your mind or even out loud that you, um, that you want to happen. It could be like a prayer, but it doesn't have to be a prayer to a deity. It can be just you having making a conscious choice that you're going to have positive thoughts today. So an example of some affirmations I might say in the morning would be, you know what, today's a great day. I've got a positive attitude. I've got a big smile on my face and a twinkle in my eye. I'm going to be very productive today and get a bunch of things done. I've got a great family. Uh, we love each other. We support each other. We help each other to, to get get our needs met. You know, I'm I'm going to have an, an awesome time hanging out with Vincent Flash doing their podcast today. I'm going to really enjoy the experience and really be present and focused in there. I'm not going to let my mind drift off and be other places. I'm going to really enjoy the moment and, and, and have a great conversation with them. You know, today is a great day. And so that's just. Yeah, so, yeah, I mean, but the, the idea is if you consciously make an effort to, to change your thoughts, just, just a little a little prayer like that, if you will. I mean, that's not a prayer to any deity. It's just I'm, I'm just making the decision that I'm going to have positive thoughts. And I, and I say that I start my day with that, and then I go about it. That can become habitual. Well, your thoughts are already habitual. So you, somebody who has negative thoughts all the time, a negative person, they're in the habit of thinking negatively. Yeah, and that's, uh, that leads real, real good to where my question was, is, uh, or there he is, I guess. Um, it's a little easier. I mean, once you get into that, to that habit, I think. But what about that person like that? Family, you know, life sucks, and, you know, I can say, life's going to be great, and all this all day long, and it doesn't matter, and it ain't done nothing. Uh, uh, you know, there's, yeah. Maybe legitimate uh, problems or thoughts. What uh, what would be the first steps in beyond just saying life is great, life is great? Well, I think that actually the 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 first step is changing your thoughts. So people, when you talk about positive thinking to people, a lot of people say, "Oh, that's just magical thinking." If I sit here and say each morning today is a great day, it's not going to make the day a great day. And in a sense, they're right. A thought itself is not going to change the day. But the idea is thoughts lead to, lead to actions, which lead to outcomes. So you can't have an action without a thought. I mean, unless it's just like a pure reaction, like, you know, you, you turn around, and as you're turning around, there's a ball whipping at your head, and you just, you know, instinctively duck or something like that. I guess there, even there, there's probably a thought going on. I'm sure it's not... The muscles aren't reacting on their own, right? You know, it's your brain is sending a signal. There's, a, there's a, a lightning quick thought that occurs. So, there is, are no actions without thoughts. So, when, when you, you change your thoughts, that, that can, that's the first step in changing your actions. In changing your actions, that, that's the first, that, that's what comes next to changing the outcomes you have in life. So, 
you know, you're, say you're somebody who's, your health isn't so great. You've been pretty down on yourself because you, you feel bad. You, you know, you got some pain. And you typically are one to just sit around all the time. And you don't have a great diet. And you've got some legitimate reasons to complain, maybe, let's say. But you say, you know what? Today, today is going to be a great day. Today's going to be better than last. I don't care about yesterday. Today, I'm going to, I'm going to start improving my health. And you, you just have, you put that thought in there. And then maybe that day, rather than just sitting around, you said, you know, I'm going to go for a walk. And so you go for a walk. And that, that might start that start off a habit where, you know, every day maybe you go for a walk after lunch kind of thing. And it, that leads to the outcome of, oh, you know what, I dropped a few pounds, and all of a sudden that pain I had in my back went away. So... It's really not magical thinking. It, it, it can have real changes in your life. And I'll tell you another thing on top of that. that there's even, I would say, there's, there's studies that support this. There are literally thousands of studies showing that placebos work to cure disease. They don't work on every single disease out there, but on quite a few diseases, there is a placebo effect where if you, if you take a sugar pill or you take a whatever, you know, they, um, you're more likely to get healthy than somebody who takes has no treatment. And why is that? Well, it's mind over matter. If your mind thinks that you're getting the cure, your body will respond to that. Well, it's the same thing. If you start having these positive thoughts, there you really can have cha- change your life. You start saying, you know what? I feel great today. I'm young, healthy. I'm full of vitality. I feel great. Through the placebo effect, you can actually, like, truly start to feel better. You know, almost in, like, a magic. But it's not its not magic. It's just your brain has amazing power to affect your body. Just like if you have negative thoughts, it has the ability to, to bring sickness to you as well. And there are studies supporting that as well, that a negative attitude will lead to sickness. So, so that's when... Um, you know, I guess that would be my, my, my thought is, is that, that that is where you stop. You, you start. You, you ask the question, where do you start, you know, if, before you get the, this, this is the first step. Changing your thoughts is the first step. That, that was perfect. You, you know, um, that really just tells exactly where, how it is in the thoughts. In, in the beginning, you know, just like, <laughs> I'm trying to reset it. Said, but I don't think I can say it better. Um, yeah, <laughs> you're too kind. Your thoughts, <laughs> your thoughts precede actions, um, and, and just keep keep going, keep going. Uh, take your walk to the, to the end of the driveway, uh, and tomorrow to the end of the bar. It, it requires motion. Uh, if uh, if you're in that frequency, then uh, you're moving, and learn to move better. I think. Hey Flash. Hey Flash. What? This is Flash and Vinny, and uh, we (laughs) ain't got no overcoat on. (laughs) No, no, none of that weird shit, man. We're making, bearing it all, baby. I'm trying to. You keep interrupting me with your questions. (laughs) What? Oh, Oh, Christ. I think thinking is what gets us into all this shit in the first place. Well, this is no time for rational thinking, after all. Then I'm right where I need to be. <laughs> what? Hey, what would rational thinking be at this point where we're at? Well, I would say it would probably have uh, red hair and be very, very tall. Uh, wow. That's a strange answer. Okay. Oh, I thought you said rash on all. You know, I've seen that before. It was just really tall red at a person. And just, yeah, one big rash. Okay. You guys are trip. Question would be never failed. <laughs> well, no matter what, no matter what Chris says, no matter what Vince says, it it doesn't matter to me so much as. Comparing, oh, this is how you do it. This is how I do it. Blah I, I blah. Tell you what, Mitch, but 
It'll matter a whole lot. You can come over and say it in my face and I'll slap you in your mouth. We'll see how you like that. I bet it matters in, mister. Oh, those southern manners are so wonderful. <laughs> hey, you know what we're doing tomorrow? Uh, I am producing for Kira tomorrow on the bridge. Uh, so I'm going to right here at RealLibertyMedian.com at uh, 4 p.m. Eastern. And we're doing a little thing about uh, Southern Pride and uh, comma, more than manners. And uh, so it's a rebel yell on the bridge with Kira. And I'll be co-hosting and producing tomorrow right here at uh, RealLibertyMedia.com 4 p.m. Eastern. Um, today we have... Uh, we have taken, we've passed the halfway point in this uh, this series, and we now, uh, as Flash and I were talking, we now shift into the uh, optimism side. We've taken a, a, taken a little look, a little examination of some causes and uh, other things. So, uh, perfect, perfect uh, to have you, Chris, right now, and uh, at this uh, uh Pivotal point, I guess, in, in the, the change up here, uh, in, in this direction, and uh, I, I couldn't have thought of anybody uh, more perfect than you to, to join us. And I'm really, really glad that uh, that you're here with us today. And you had a lot of great words to say. Uh, this one is definitely one uh, that I will go back and listen to again because I don't always listen to myself. <laughs> Wait, pause. <laughs> Well, so anyway, hey, 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 butt nugget. Hey, hey, butt nugget. No matter what you interrupt me with still, you can't possibly, there's not enough room in my reality for the both of you and me. So one of, <laughs> I'm going to just enjoy my reality. Thank you very much. Yours would be overload. <laughs> Yeah, but we got this, see, we got this, like, uh, social reality that we share, and and there's so many different wavelengths on it that you're bound to bump into somebody eventually and have a little accident. <laughs> you know, you and I, uh, we, we kind of uh, pun back and forth, and uh, uh, just, what is that, the uh, all that, yeah, but actually, uh, you and I have uh, uh, lots of common understanding. Yeah, I love brother and sir. All oh, great folks, and uh, I, I'm proud that, uh, that I know you. And, uh, been able to get to know you more and more. Uh, a lot of people don't understand, uh, don't know how to take some folks, you know. Yeah, you know, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, it was but what. Yeah, what Chris was talking about. I see all the values in it. I'm also. Um, I'm not young anymore. I'm a little older than he is. And at some point, there's some things that lose. Um, you, I've lost an interest in certain value systems. So I'm becoming aware of other things that when I was younger, I didn't give two fucks about that. But the things oh, that I did care about, I took care of that. I but. told you I had that on order. And all you got to do is let me know and I'll forward you something you did. <laughs> successful. I want them to find happiness. And I want them to, to have freedom, you know, and, and, and that, that's kind of the overriding theme that runs through all of my shows on Choice Conversations. You know, I, I call it Choice Conversations because it, uh, because the, the, the show is liberty-based, you know, and um, like I said earlier, choices is just another word for freedom. So I like that double meaning of the 
choice conversation there. So, but I, I don't look at the difference between me and a lot of liberty shows is that I, I don't spend a whole lot of time talking about politics and the like. I, because for me personally, I just haven't found it to be effective in, um, Change, you know, having a positive change in my life. When I spend a lot of time talking about politics, a lot of times I don't even, I, I don't feel good. It doesn't give, it, it drains my energy. You know, where if I, I'm talking about some of these other things like relationships and, and parenting and and uh, meditation and, and, and health, these things they, they energize me when I'm talking about it. Where where like politics and, and conspiracies and all this, they drain my energy. So. You know, I'm just, it's just trying to look at, okay, where can I have the most impact in my life and in the world? And that's where it's at. So that's, you know, my show. If you just Google Choice Conversations, you'll go on there. It'll, it'll come right up. The first, the whole page, the whole first page, if you Google Choice Conversations, will be me. And that's the easiest way to find me. And, uh, you know, I talk about parenting. I talk about relationships. talk about, um, you know, health. And um, pretty much, you name it. I mean, I, I do get into politics in there a little bit, too. It's just... Um, not my, uh, not my my primary focus. So, but yeah. But again, thank you, uh, Vincent Flash. It's been a pleasure. Thanks, Chris. Really appreciate it. And uh, we'll we'll do something again sometime. And in the meantime, uh, I'll still be uh, keeping up with you and connecting voices. And uh, just real proud you've been here. And this is this has been a choice conversation with uh, Chris Bruce and Stefan. Uh, find him up with, and I'll drop it again right there. Uh, at uh, Choice Conversations, uh, oh, oh, I got the wrong one. Back up. Uh, <laughs> there it is. And uh, you also, are you on Twitter? Twitter? I am. Uh, it's, uh, my handle is Choice Convo, like C-O-N-V-O, because Choice Conversations was too many characters, apparently. Hey, Chris, if you've got a website or something to pitch or tell people about or another show you're on, do it now. Yeah, no, um, just uh, like I said, if you just Google Choice Conversations or go on iTunes for Choice Conversations, yeah, that's the way place to find me. I yeah, appreciate that. Yeah, you, yeah, subscribe. I, I'm pretty sure, yeah, I know I was. Choice Conversations, I got you followed at Twitter. I'm going to add you to my, I've just started a, a, a list for best. So as I come across the folks that are best, I have to do that. So I'm going to do that. Uh, I think I'm also subscribed to you at iTunes. Um, anyways, yeah, go go there, Choice Conversations, do that search like you Boom, there you'll find him. Uh, and uh, we'll catch up later, Chris. Thanks so much. All right, take care. Yeah, you, uh, thank you for being a part of what matters worldwide in this time that we have together. Uh, there's no time for rational thinking. Uh, uh, why, why be illogical or rational or anything else except for what you are? Try to make it better. Makes the world better. Thanks, Flash. Thanks, sir. Thank you, Grimner. The great mind uh, over at reallibertymedia.com. Now, this more than radio, it's more than chat. It is a great source to find out what's happening around. Check that out. Uh, Real Liberty Media uh, daily, every day. Check that out. I'm uh, just going to start here for a moment. By no potions. <clears throat> hey, say goodnight, Gracie. We're out of here, Gracie. Thanks for having me, Mary. WorldTruth.org and UCY.tv. Jules, awesome. Thanks for all the chatters joining in. Thanks for participating. Remember, tune in tomorrow. Uh, stay tuned tonight. Uh, Grammy Mary, yeah, in the rocket chair. Blast off, baby. And then we got the Freakers Ball. And I think I'll bet you the one and only eight tracks, not eight tracks, not cassette. Not even real to real, but he's going to be rocking us out with some pretty cool things tonight. So uh, stick around at RollingTheMedia.com. Lots of great stuff. Tomorrow, remember, if you're on the bridge, I'll be there. Uh, Southern Pride. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to make some contrast and uh, pride, friendships. What is it?